exceeding abundantly above what we can even imagine. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. And tonight we declare that we have ears to hear what our Father God wants to say to us. And we will have hearts that will obey what we hear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we are so privileged. We're so privileged to, to be able to enter into worship like this. Oh, God, Father God, Father God. Tonight, um, I'm going to share what um, began stirring in my heart last July. And I can remember the freshness of it. And I've been chewing on it. I've been meditating on it. I'll, it'll keeps rising back in my thoughts, in my spirit. And when Andy asked if I would share, I knew this was it. I've been brooding on it. You know what I mean? I've been on the nest so to speak, concerning this. It's Ecclesiastes 5, 18 to 20. Even so, I've noticed one thing at least that is good. It is good for people to eat, drink, and enjoy, yeah! enjoy their work under the sun. Yeah, it's a short life compared to what we're going to spend in eternity, but God's given it to us to accept our lot in life. It's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life, this is indeed a gift from God. God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time oh, to brood over the past. I didn't know that word was in there. Um, tonight, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to personalize his word to you and receive it from the Father God's heart, the one that created you, your life, because he wanted you to be living now. He wants, he wants you alive and doing well now. Amen. He created a world we don't know how long ago. But right now, he wants us in this world. And he wants you to enjoy being here. Amen. And as we look at some of these scriptures, I thank you, Lord, that revelation is going to come if it's not there already. I have a short little quote from Joyce Meyer. She said, we will always be moving towards some goal or objective in our lives. As soon as we finish one, it seems as if another will take its place. As believers, we are always extending our faith for something. Whatever we believe God for right now could happen soon or maybe a year from now. But by that time, we will be believing God for something else. Amen. The Lord is teaching me that since we are going to spend the majority of our lives waiting for something, we should learn to enjoy life as it unfolds. Enjoy life as it unfolds. Enjoy life as it unfolds. If we do not, life will pass us by and we will never enjoy where we are right now. I encourage you to enjoy everything you do to the fullest extent for as long as you live. It's interesting to me that last week, great-grandma Joyce was here and I believe that's true of her. She's enjoying everything she does to the fullest extent. 
Oh, we thank you, Lord. We just bless you, Father. John 10.10 10 says, I've come that you may have and that you may enjoy life. That's what Jesus says to us. I want you to enjoy life and have it in abundance till it overflows. And Father God, in Jesus' name, all of us right now, there may be an area of our life that we know is not overflowing with your abundance. But we want it to. We want it to. We want to receive and walk in that abundant life. And we thank you now for the revelation of your Holy Spirit to show us how. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 32, 41. This is another one that just, um, I love it. Jesus says to us tonight, I rejoice over you to do you good, for I've assuredly planted you here with all my heart and with all my soul. So how can we enjoy life? And I know every one of us can learn this more. The first thing, don't worry. It's like he wants us to be worry-free, stress-free. Pastor Steve and I, I would say for the last year, maybe it's two years, it's for sure a year, we have been reading, studying, listening to resources on dealing with stress. We want to learn. I'm 61 years old. I don't want to live the rest of my life stressed out. Amen. I don't care what I'm doing, where I am. I, that's not what I want. I want to enjoy life. Um, so it says in Matthew 6, 25, um, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. We're in everyday life, right? This is everyday life. And some of us, like Sue, just had the funeral for her mother. Some of us just had um, something unpleasant happen in a different way, like at work or maybe in a relationship. Some of you, like the engagement <laughs> of Anthony and... Randy, where are you? Okay. I mean, that's exciting. But it's everyday life. It's everyday life. Um, whether you have enough food, don't worry about whether you have enough food and drink, and the Living Bible says, or money. Or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? So how can I learn to enjoy my life? A second point here, and this is Joseph Prince quote. He says, let go and let God take over. That is exactly what you do when you are at rest. He goes on to say, you stop trying and start receiving instead. Trying presumes you are strong. Resting presumes Jesus is strong for you. Right now, Father God, in Jesus' name, any one of us here, if there's been a striving, if there's been something, Lord, we've been trying so hard at, great effort. We thank you for the revelation of your spirit that we are able to let go of that and let you take over. We're going to receive from you tonight. Amen. Joyce Meyer in the same vein says, Learn to go with God instead of trying to make God go with you. <gasps> Matthew eleven thirty, Let me teach you and you'll find rest for your souls. Tonight that's what was happening. We were enter entering into a holy rest. Amen. Joyce Meyer, as she taught on this, said the word rest means free and light. Free and light. So Jesus says to us tonight, 
He wants us to be free and light. Repeat that after me if that's your heart cry. I'm free and light. I'm free and light. Tonight, I'm free and light. It's by the work of your spirit, Lord, not by our striving. Uh, Joyce Meyer, this was something else. I listened to her different times. Uh, different times, I'm on the treadmill in the morning. I love how I can get Creflo Dollar, uh, Andrew Womack, Joyce Meyer, whatever, and HGTV. I flick it back and forth <laughs> while I'm on there. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, Joyce Meyer at one point, she said, take the pressure off yourself for perfection. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take the pressure off yourself for perfection. That's how you can start to learn to enjoy your life. If my best, she said, is not good enough for you, well, tough. This is who I am. Amen. This morning it was so interesting. I was listening to a CD by Pastor George Pearson. That's the Copeland son-in-law. And he said the very same thing. I mean, very same thing. He said, if my best is not good enough for you, and he was addressing, you know, uh, uh, it was a group of pastors. He says, if my best is not good enough for you, then he went, this is me. I don't care what you think. This is me. I wasn't meant for to have Steve's, my, my husband's personality. Right. I'm meant to be me. Amen. You're meant to be who you are. Amen. And to, to say, I like me. I like who I am. To have that, and some of you, you know, with a sister or your mom or your dad, if there's any of that, the thing of living up to someone else's expectations, it's Father God. That's, that's who we're living for. And so, yeah, we're free to be ourselves. Um, another thing Pastor Pearson said, uh, this is what you get, this is me, and he said, give yourself a break. All of us have had, and it could have been in this day, where there's been a, you think it's a perceived thought that someone had about you, and it wasn't up, it was down, that type of thing. But it's like, give yourself a break. This is, this is life. I mean, we're surrounded by people. But the important thing is that we're not tough on ourselves. That just defeats what God created us for. How can I learn to enjoy my life? Be content with what you have. Philippians 4, 11. I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now, that can pertain to um, your car. It's not the car you want a year from now. It may be like a piece of junk. Well, take care of it till the Lord replaces it with something else. It may be with your house, your apartment, whatever. It's not where you want to stay. Take care of it until he gives you something better. Be content with it, satisfied with it, happy at your job. Some of you know that five years from now, this is not the job you're going to be in. You think, heaven forbid that I'm still at that job five years from now. But make the most of it. Be content that you got a job, you got a paycheck coming. Be thankful about that. Maybe it's um, learning to be content, satisfied with your mate or no mate, your kids or no kids. But it's all about the attitude of your heart. And I just, as I um, uh, was writing, working on this yesterday, I thought of our house. We have lived here now um, 35 uh, years. And when we first moved here, we, were, um, uh, we moved up with Jerry and Joyce Pomp, 
and their four kids, yeah, they, none of them were married, just Steve and I were married, and um, I, I can remember we were so excited, we just knew we were supposed to um, move up here. But the lodging was not the best. Um, I was pregnant with Sarah. We came up in June. She was born in October. And Steve and I started out in a homemade camper that we borrowed from someone in South Dakota until I could no longer hoist myself up on the mattress to sleep there. In the meantime, we had fixed up a little teeny tiny trailer that had come with the property, no running water, no toilet, no sink, nothing like that, but it was bigger than the, the homemade camper. And so I fixed it up. See? I, it, for me, I was thankful for that. Um, I made it like a little home. And then from there, when Sarah was born, okay, Jerry and Joyce, they put up a new Wausau home on the property next to us. Steve and I got the trailer house. It was like graduation time. <laughs> Running water, a toilet. You know, I just, it was, and I know from the pictures the kids will say, but mom, it had birch trees down the middle of the living room all the way to the kitchen. Why well, I says, yeah, that was holding the roof up. <laughs> and I decorated those birch trees. I had my philodendron crawling around them and my spider plants, and people would come and go, oh, it looks nice in here. It did. Whatever stage we had with our crazy housing situation, when I look back on it, it looked good. When we couldn't afford bedding plants, we'd go across the road into the state forest and I'd be digging up cow slips and ferns and whatever, because they were free. Transplanting them by my little sidewalk, or no, I didn't have a sidewalk. Um, but anyway, I had to smile. For some reason, I ran upstairs and I come up there and I thought, okay, what stage are we at now? We've been doing more remodeling. Each time we had a child, Steve, who's not a carpenter, built a piece onto our trailer. And it's really, that's what happened. We kept, so we had three different additions or whatever. And I'm so thankful over the years, uh, we were able, we either had um, men from this church who just had mercy on us and helped us. <laughs> Build it, or we hired them. The last project was it was last year. We were working on it, um, thanks to Greg Pierce, and um, I can remember. Okay, we were going to get new kitchen counters in, oh, new kitchen counters, and then I had the thought, huh? Those old kitchen counters, they're too good. You know, do I put them in the garage or whatever? I had the thought to move them upstairs into what had been Andy's bedroom, and I've reclaimed it for my art room. And so I watched those guys take up those pieces of the kitchen counter and lay them on the floor there. I was so thankful. I, just, I could see it. I could picture it. I was content. Okay, I couldn't use them. They were on the floor. But I was content just visual. I could visualize them eventually the frames being built and the countertops going up. And through that whole process, which now they're up thanks to Andrew, my son-in-law, I learned more and more to be content with what I had. And I just realized I learned something really important because life is not always perfect and not always you know, here it is. It's all ready for you. Sometimes it comes that way. Uh, how can I learn to enjoy my life? Number four, Joyce Meyer says, learn to zip your lip. Amen. I have on my um, bathroom mirror teachings from Keith Moore about my speech. Think before you speak. Just all little phrase things that he's, he's 
And I'm, I am learning. I'm learning. And I'm reminded of that every time I look on the bathroom mirror. First Peter 3, 8 says, summing up, be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of you. No exceptions, no retaliation, no sharp-tongued sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. You'll be a blessing and also get a blessing. Goes on, whoever wants to embrace life and see the day fill up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil, cultivate good, and run after peace for all your worth. Um, as I was uh, reading that scripture, I had a flashback to Volga, South Dakota. It would have been 1975, 76, in that time period. And um, the Lord provided a Great teaching job for me. I'd graduated from Calvin College in Grand Rapids, Michigan with a teaching degree, art and humanities. So anyway, I, by the grace of God, I get offered this job of a little Christian school in Volga. And um, it was interesting. It was very interesting because... Uh, I started that job teaching in September. We got married in October. And I was principal. I was the principal of this little Christian grade school. Um, I taught all subjects for grades 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, I was the art teacher for the, you know, all the, all the uh, grades. Phi ed teacher, music teacher. <laughs> and I was a new wife. <laughs> So life was very, very interesting. But I thought, why, you know, what did I learn to zip your lip? You know, I was thinking, whatever. Why, I remembered it was the school board meetings. Because I was principal, I was required to attend the monthly school board meetings. Well, um, they were not very pleasant. I was, it was, there were three men all Christians, two of them basically could have learned a lot from Joyce Meyer, learned to zip your lip. They had a comment about everything and it tended to be negative, about the parents of kids, about certain students, about just money situations or whatever. Um, it wasn't very pleasant. I love teaching, though. I love teaching. But what the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance was the third man, a quiet man, a farmer. He didn't think he knew it all. And he, when he would speak, it was like fresh. It was blessing. He would bless. I remembered that. I was sitting by the table and I thought, that man, I can't remember his name anymore. I can just picture him. When he finally, he would bless. And I would wait for his words after the meeting was over, before I'd leave. I knew he'd have good words for me. This is what, I'm 61. How old was I back then? That's what I remember. That man and the graciousness of his speech toward me. Thank you, Lord, you're helping us. First um, Peter 3, 10. Uh, the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. And how can I learn to enjoy my life? Do good. Do good. Every one of us, every day, has a fresh, clean slate to do good. 
for someone. And let's not forget our own mates or the ones or your parents. Where you, when you wake up, who's there? How can you do good? How can you do good towards them? Um, 1 Timothy 6, 17. <clears throat> Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all things we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you right now for the working of your Holy Spirit in each one of us, Lord. We've said that we do have ears to hear. We've opened our hearts, Lord, for revelation by your Spirit for clarity in the name of Jesus, clear thinking, so we can clearly receive what you want us to receive tonight in Jesus' name. This is the right time for the working of your spirit in us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your heart towards every one of us here is with so much love, so much of what you want for good for our lives that we can't describe it. But we're going to be receivers tonight of that. We don't have to understand it. He's saying, just receive of me. Receive of my life. Receive of my love. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you tonight. You're awesome to us, and we love you. And I speak and declare the blessing of the Lord on everyone here. Uh, Incredible blessings. Incredible favor. And at who you are in all your relationships, wherever your feet go, whatever your hands are are put to, whatever your work, whatever, whatever, I speak incredible blessings of God in and upon you. I speak concerning the finances relating to every individual in this, in this room. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs beyond the understanding, beyond the work ethic. Breakthroughs in the spirit, money, provision, resources, wisdom comes to each one of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed.